phenylcutaneuria. Hey, I'm Richard, and at the point of recording this, I am in my early 40s. I was born in the early 80s and have a genetic condition called phenylcutaneuria. Phenylcutaneuria, or PKU for short. As I create these videos, I'm probably going to pronounce a lot of medical terms incorrectly. A lot. PKU is a genetic condition, a lifelong condition, in which our bodies struggle to process an amino acid called phenylalanine. Phenylalanine, something like that. Undiagnosed, the condition can cause absolute havoc on an individual, um, and most of that damage is done at a young young age. So if we think of when we're growing, especially as babies, not only are we growing physically, but our brains are developing as well. And phenylalanine can cause absolute chaos and stop that process happening in a natural way. So if I hadn't have been diagnosed, my life would have been distinctively different. I would have brain damage, mental health issues, most likely physical issues as a direct result of that as well probably. The condition itself was actually only really treated from the early 50s, which I find absolutely madness because I was born in the early 80s. You're talking 30 years, yeah? 30 years in, in the time frame of human history. I could have been born at any time, couldn't I? Um, as can all the other people with PKU too. It just so happened I was born, number one, in a country that did diagnosis, and number two, in a time frame where treatment had already happened. All right, it was only 30 years in, 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 prior to that, but still I find that absolutely crazy. I feel very lucky as a result. The treatment given to individuals with PKU was to follow a low protein diet. So meat, out of the question, eggs, some dairy foods, staple based products such as pastas, rice, cakes, biscuits, fish. I would probably guess maybe 70 to 80% of foods that were off the table. And again, people with my condition have it at different tolerance levels. So for some, it's really strict. They have to avoid literally so much. For me, I was quite fortunate. So my daily tolerance um, of protein was 19 grams from food and 60 grams from a supplement. Thankfully, supplements were created and thank God they've progressed over the years, but they were where we got our minerals, vitamins and protein from. Uh, we also were able to consume low protein food or medical low protein foods that have been made for us low protein pastas, rice, cake, misc cake, cake biscuits, cake mixes, and biscuits. That's what I was trying to say. And a load of other um, products as well. Because without that, I have no idea where we'd get, get our calories from. So I am incredibly thankful for one, diagnosis, but two, medical science and food technology and the combination of all of that, which have enabled me to live the life that I had because I've lived a very good quality based life and I'm incredibly thankful for that. People who are undiagnosed have a very different walk of life. If I wasn't diagnosed, I would have had brain damage. I would have needed probably full time care. I probably wouldn't been able to look after myself in the same way that I am able to now. And I wouldn't be able to experience the life that I've had family, friends, experiences, holidays, trips and adventures, children of my own, you know, and sports and hobbies that take up a large part of my life, actually. I've been quite sporty throughout my whole life. I played football, soccer, if you're from the States. Um, I've snowboarded. I have regularly used a gym. Um, I have done martial arts in my younger years. And also have had a career 
in higher education in the university system. And the great thing is, the more that I connect with the PKU community across the world, the more I realize and find out that actually there's some amazing individuals who have the same condition that I've got and are doing incredible things. They've got careers in a whole range of different professions and are happy, successful and healthy. And that is awesome, isn't it? I'm now, thankfully, on a drug called Kuvan. In the UK, it's called Sapropatin, Sarapropatin, something like that. It's definitely not like that. Also called BH4. Why is there so many names for it? I don't know. I have no idea. I like BH4 because I can actually pronounce it. And that drug, thankfully, has helped me to increase my protein level from food from 19 grams up to 38. Now, I actually probably sit around kind of 32, 33 ish, mainly because I want my um, levels to be quite low. Um, but the drug has been kind of life changing, really. And I feel so grateful and thankful to have it. PKU, though, in terms of the treatment and the care across the world, is really, really inconsistent. This inconsistency was even documented 11 years ago on this very platform in a video produced by a chap with PKU called Kevin. If you haven't seen this video, I've put a link in the description where you can access and watch it on the YouTube platform. So probably around three to four years ago, I started to document uh, my journey with PKU um, on Instagram. And now have migrated over to YouTube as well. So I'll try and do both platforms. Um, so feel free to follow me on Instagram. The, the Instagram name or tag name is in the description. Also like and comment on the video. I've learned so much from the PKU community overall. Um, so digital platforms like this for me are awesome. And I'm sure they are for a lot of you who engage with it as well.